In this video, we're going to highlight the tilt up concrete contractors and some tools that I've seen out there and also a workflow that they call paper dolls. And so that was new to me. I was out on a site in Kansas City. And so we developed uh, a workflow for that digitally. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So first off, um, I'm going to show you guys. I've seen a lot of tools over the years. People uh, will have plan views of cranes and things like that for site logistics. So I just went out, quickly created some tonight um, playing around, but uh, I went in and built this crane here and took into consideration, I put some circles in there for the radius. So you can uh, look at the pick points and place this uh, crane where you want that to be, to be as efficient as possible. And then one of the tools that I saw from the crew in Kansas City was they actually had a concrete pump. So I created one of those um, just for fun, um, placing this concrete pump wherever we might on site. Uh, these particular job sites, they're doing a million square foot uh, warehouses. And so they need very large equipment that can uh, span great distances. So I just went in, I don't even know if this is accurate, but um, I've got a pump here that's to scale and then some radius dis distances for that, um, the slewing radius. So you can place those on site. Uh, I know they try to place these and then keep those there as long as possible. So uh, when they're laying out their panels on the slab, they can efficiently uh, use that while it's in one place. So those are just some cool tools that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, while we're looking at site logistics, let's go ahead and look at some of the tools that I had um, for site management in here. And you can find these tools. These are actually part of the free download on my website. I'll put the link to that in the description of the video as well. So feel free to go out and grab these. You'll see all kinds of different um, tools in here. There's over 1600 tools that you can download. Um, the crane and the paper doll workflow that I'm going to show you in a second are not in that download, but uh, these site logistics or site management tools are going to be in there. So here you can see um, I've got tools for exclusion zones. So maybe uh, this is part of the project where we're not going to be working. We can mark that off and you can see I've got um, inclusion zone, exclusion zone labeled in there. Uh, I have high voltage lines in here. Those are tools as well. I've got an overhead power line that I'm showing in here. So we make sure that we're aware of that when we bring in the trucks and the cranes. Um, I also, oops, I also have tools in here for temporary fence. So if this is a parking area with tools, we want to fence off, we can put in our tools or our Put in our temporary fence and then I also have a gate tool in here so we can place that and you'll see a bunch of those available in here to utilize so um, feel free to download and use those um, so if you guys have been watching my videos for a while you might know you may not know a lot of these topics stem from blog posts that I'm working on so this one in particular I am I'm writing a blog post on my website, so I'll put the link to those as well in my uh, in the video description. Feel free to look there for any of the older videos too. A lot of those have blog um, content as well. And then also a shout out to the um, Bluebeam Built blog. They highlight um, a lot of these as well. I write articles for them, so you'll see this one in there published very soon as well. So take a look and subscribe to uh, the built blog also. Next, we're going to take a look at that paper doll workflow. I'm going to close this out, close my site equipment. And uh, I'm just going to delete a bunch of this stuff because I'm going to use this plan for this workflow as well. Um, I'm going to go out to an elevation view. And so what these guys are doing for the paper doll workflow is they go to the elevation view and I know this isn't uh, a tilt up project, but I, uh, it's the closest thing I had to use as an example. 
But what they do is they go in and they trace out the panels and get the, um, the volume of concrete and the area and so on. And then they'll go and uh, place these onto the floor or onto the slab plan and try to lay those out. So the challenge that they were having was they'll place these out. It's drawn at eighth inch uh, scale. And what they were doing was uh, on site is they were selecting all of these, copying it, and then going back to the plan and pasting it. So I'm going to right click and paste. And what they found was because this is a different scale, it comes in, um, it's not coming in at an accurate scale. So that workflow didn't work. So what we did, um, if I go back to that sheet, what I showed them was to go in and we're using the uh, volume measurement. We go in and trace each one of the different panels uh, and then give it a depth so it'll give us our cubic yards of concrete. And we also, I taught them to add more or less a mark number for those panels in the label and the subject. So over here in our properties um, panel, you can see that I've got south one, south panel one in the subject and the label. And I'll show you what that does and why we did that in a second. So, so far, uh, our tool chest is empty. We've just got this generic volume measurement tool. So I'm going to pick on that and I'm going to go in and grab the layout for this last panel. Click and drag, trace out that panel. It gives me my cubic yards for the whole thing. And now I need to take care of the cutouts, the openings. So, so next I'm going to go up to my cutout. For the openings, we go up under the area measurement and grab the polygon cutout. And then simply just click and drag and trace out that window. It's going to cut that quantity out of the total panel. And a little trick here also, if you select that cutout and hold your control key, you can also click and drag that to make copies on these other windows. I know they're being a little bit more precise with these, but um, that's a trick that you can utilize as well. There's a couple more down here. Hold my control key, drag that down here. If I hold my control and my shift key, I can drag it straight over on top of the other one. And then I've got my panel layout. So I'm gonna go in and name this one. We've got North 2, North 3. I'm gonna name this one North 4. I'm going to copy and paste that into my subject as well. And I put it on the label so that I can see it on plan or on the elevation view here. It's kind of a mark number. And I put it in the subject because on the next uh, step, I'm going to add these to my tool set. So this sheet is calibrated. I did my measurement. Next, I'm going to drag with my right mouse button, I'm going to drag a window and select all of those panels. And I'm going to right click and add this to my tool chest. Now, of course, this is on a different monitor because I, I have a bunch of tool sets here, but I'm going to add it to my tilt up paper dolls um, tool set over here. And this is just a temporary tool set that I use for this workflow. I'm going to come up and do the same thing with the south wall. Add this to my tool chest. And now you can see I have all of my north and my south panels. And the next important step that I need to do is actually come into my properties and make sure I set the scale of my tool set. So I'm telling it to calibrate my tools in my tool set to what to the sheet that I took them from. So I'm going to say apply scale. Next, I'm going to go back to that. Um, in this case, the site plan, they would go back to um, their foundation or their slab plan. 
and here's my south wall. So I'm going to come over here and because I calibrated the tool set and I calibrated this sheet, I can place these tools and they'll adjust according to the scale. So I'm going to grab my south, place that, south two, place that one next to it, and so on. So you can start to lay out and what they're doing is they're laying these out on the slab so they can build their forms. Uh, lay everything out on the slab and pour those and then when they after they're done they tilt those up and put those into place so here you can see how we got those to scale on the uh, plan when it's a different scale so the north side I'm just gonna as an example place these So on, you might have to rotate those, um, but you get the idea. You're bringing them in at the correct scale, so you can map out what your pores are going to look like. So here you can see I've got all of those in here. I can, I can judge what uh, I'm going to be able to accomplish in my pores. I even talk to them about using spaces as well if they want to uh, use spaces draw a box for a space, um, put a date to it or something like that to be able to schedule. Uh, in the markups list, you could also create custom columns with dates and uh, put in poor dates, things like that to try to build out a, a schedule in here. And you could also use status. So when it is poured, you could mark the status poured. When it's um, when the forms are being uh, laid out you can have a status for that we can build custom statuses for all of that so these are just some quick ideas for the tilt up contractor and i hope you enjoyed these again uh, if you know somebody that would benefit from these ideas and these workflows be sure to share the video uh, share the blog posts and we'll see you on the next one thanks